Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura, and today I'd like to make a reversible bunting. A reversible bunting is one of those long strings with those triangular flags off of them. Now, having it reversible means I'm going to get more than one occasion or more than one look. I'm going to be using two bright, fun fabrics, one called Pixie and one called Euphoria. So the fabrics today are this Euphoria, and this really does read tropical to me. And fun and bright comes in this Pixie fabric. I'm going to turn this little bunting into a reversible bunting. So we do need the pattern for those triangles. So print this out at 100% and tape that together. You're going to have just a little bit less than 10 inches from the bottom to the top. That means we're going to be able to use 10 inch squares. When we're looking at this, it does look like we're going to waste a lot, but we are going to be able to sew the ends together. So we're going to end up with two triangles out of one 10 inch square. Now, of course, you can always do yardage, but I thought this is a great way to use up some 10 inch squares and to be able to maximize that fabric. So to simplify the cutting, what we're going to do is we're going to fold this triangle in half. So we're going to fold it along that long side. Then we're going to take that 10 inch square and fold it in half. I'm going to be able to match up both of those folds and use any ruler and cut. When we do cut that, we're going to notice a little point at the end that we're going to be able to cut out. So I have that little tip cut off and when I open up this I now have that correct size triangle and I'm going to be able to match up this fabric so the right sides are touching. Stitch a quarter inch down that one edge then when we open it up we're going to have enough fabric to make a second one. So this is all that's left over from that 10 inch square. I would recommend pressing that seam open. An open seam is not as noticeable on the right side. Now the pattern is having us make 12 of these triangles, but of course you can make as many as you want. The pattern also does recommend an interfacing. I personally will not be using that interfacing. I don't mind that it's a little bit softer. Now there is one more tip I'd like to share with you on cutting these triangles out. And it's going to speed up the sewing and the cutting. We're going to take those 10 inch squares, fold them in half, and sew along that one raw edge. So we have the fold on one side and the stitching on the other. Take that template and tape it along the one side of a ruler, and we only need that half. So this is that seam allowance, not the centerpiece. This edge is the cutting edge, not the center. So I'm going to be able to take this ruler, place that edge, so that's that fold down the center. So the fold is going to go along the fold. I can line up everything. That template is attached to the back of the ruler and cut. So the one is done. The next, I'm going to be able to switch that over. I already have that stitched together. Have that go along the seam line, just like we were doing before but this time it's sewn together. And I have that cut. So I have that half template on that ruler. I've put it on the fold on the one side and have put it on the stitching on the other. All I need to do is press. So I have my triangles without the seams and the triangles with the seams. And if you look, you barely can see that seam. And that's because I did press it flat and the pattern is a little bit busy. Unless you don't want those triangles to look the same 
we can do a split triangle. And I'm going to do it the very first way. Fold that in half, match up those two center seams. So I have the fold and that fold of the triangle. Cut that out. So I have that one complete triangle. And I'll do that to a second square. So I have my second one done. Now I'm going to be able to switch these up. Normally I would have sewn down that center. But in this case, I can sew them right together this way. So I'm going to do all of my big triangles first, and then I'm going to mix and match all of these others. So I'm going to have 12 of the solid ones, and then there'll be 12 split ones. When those two sides are sewn together, they really are going to become really fun parts of this little bunting. Now I'm going to sew the two together. So the pixie fabric is going to go on one side and this is going to go on the other. So I'm just going to match them up. Place right sides together and stitch right to this point and then turn them right side out. So I'm going to have the one side done and the other side and I do not need to close that top up. One thing that I do want to do is I want to do a row of top stitching right along that point. I did not add interfacing. So when I do go to wash this, they're going to stay a lot nicer if we do do that top stitching. But that top stitching is optional. With that top stitching done, I am done my 24 flags. And that's what I have chosen to make. But of course you can do as many as you would like. This top part we will need to sew into a binding so that we're going to be able to hang that up. I'm going to go right there in that binding. Now this is about 8 inches so depending on how many you have you're just going to have to multiply how many flags you have by the 8 inches. And in my case, I'm going to need 192 inches of that binding. And I do want a lot on each end so I can tie it around a tree or a door or whatever I want. And maybe even just make a big bow. And just to make it easy, the pattern says 2 inches, but I'm going to use pre-cuts and use 2 and a half inches. So I need to take seven of my lovely pre-cuts and sew them together. And I'm going to use that beautiful pixie dots. And I'm going to work these long strips just like I would do a regular binding. So I'm going to put them together and stitch from corner to corner so that I will have that angled seam. And I'm going to sew all seven of my strips together and then just like my binding, I'm going to fold them in half and press them. So I've put those pieces together and have pressed them in half. I'm going to start from the middle of my piece and work my way out. And there's a few different ways that we can finish this. One way we can stitch these on is just like a binding, so we're going to leave that folded in half. That raw edge, we're going to put the raw edge of that flag and we're going to be able to stitch them all down. Once we stitch that, we're going to be able to take that folded edge, turn it over, and stitch it down. And that's going to give us this little binding. However, if we want a wider top, we're going to be able to open that up and stitch down just one edge. We already have that fold in the center, so that fabric's going to want to fold over for us and then we can just roll that one edge down and stitch a second seam. Regardless, they both need that second row of stitching. I myself don't mind if it's a small little binding, so I'm going to do it just like I bind a quilt. So let me start stitching this down. I'm going to start from the center and go out to one side and the center and go to the other. So here I have that raw edge of the flags on the raw edge of that binding. 
So I'm going to be able to just turn that over and leave the seam allowances inside and just stitch that down. As I'm doing this little roll and stitching that down, I'm going to continue this even in this area that I did not stitch. I'm just going to pretend there was something there. Turn one seam over and then put that down. So it's going to be the same width all the way down. And when you get to the end, just tuck in that seam allowance. And then when you stitch, it will be a clean edge. So by rolling that little end over, it does give it a nice finish. So I have the top of the flag on one side and the top of the flag on the other side. I have nice long ends to tie wherever I need and I have the pixie fabric all on one side and that is so cute. That is going to be great for a child's room, a birthday party, any special occasion. And then on the other side, I do have that fun tropical look. So this will be a lot of fun for outside, a games night, and I might even make a tablecloth to match. These flags are great. So we have the Euphoria fabric on the one side, and the pixie on the other side. You can see where those half flags really do add a lot of fun and a lot of dimension. Now this is a great project to even do embroidery on these flags. However we do it, it's going to be fun and it can be done for many different occasions. And having them reversible means we can get more than one occasion out of the flags. I'll put a link in the description to this free pattern and if you are following along with that pattern and this video you will notice that well I didn't follow along with the directions. The directions are great but I just wanted to give you another option on how to do these. The template is a great template so be sure to print it out for that. I think this is going to be great for birthday parties, any type of celebration regardless on the side that I use. Thanks for joining me today. Bye for now.